Jeshua, the early years, heaven on earth. Now we begin, and indeed, once again, greetings unto you, beloved and holy friends. In truth, all that occurs within your dimension is not unknown or unavailable to us. For where we abide, and there are many of us, we abide in a state of consciousness in which the transmutation of energies through your third dimensional realm are entirely observable by us. Yes, this does mean that there is not at any time a true state of privacy, if by privacy you mean secrecy and avoidance of relationship. This means that, as you call to yourself your physical earth plane experience, in each and every moment, whether you choose to acknowledge it or not, you are in relationship with the whole of creation. And the quality of that relationship is what mirrors back to you the state of consciousness that you are choosing to abide within. It is therefore always wise to look clearly and honestly at the nature of your moment-to-moment -moment experience. What are you truly aware of now? What thoughts are you permitting to flow through the mind? What feelings are those thoughts generating within the field of energy that you call the body? Why is this important? To come to where I am requires a complete transcendence of the physical domain or experience, not an escape from, for transcendence does not rest on escape. Transcendence can only rest on embracing. For how can you transcend what you refuse to acknowledge as a part of your experience? Therefore, the heart and mind that is willing to utilize each and every moment of its experience in whatever domain or dimension it finds itself existing within, is that heart and that mind that will indeed come to where I am, to the finality of what you might call evolution, in which all seeking has ended in which the need for experience is over, where there is not one question and not one doubt. Imagine, if you will, such a state in which you abide in such perfect wakefulness that the mind does not even entertain the thought of desiring a physical form through which to funnel a limited sphere of experience. A state of being in which, by simply turning the attention of your consciousness, you can abide anywhere you wish in a moment's notice. Actually, even quicker than that that just by turning your consciousness you can abide in any time frame within the physical dimension to observe it, to interact with it, to bring your wisdom to it. To turn your consciousness to a dimension and a time frame seemingly far removed from where you are upon the planet, and all in the twinkling of an eye. These things are your potential. They were placed within you in the moment of your creation. And if you would well receive it, you have already experienced the state in which I am. And there is a part of you that has never left that state. What then has occurred? For look well upon what your experience is in this moment. Where do you find yourself sitting or standing? What is the climate of your environment? Is it noisy? Is it chaotic? Have you lit a few candles and burned your incense? Have you played some of your favorite music so you can begin to evoke a physiological change in the body that you will then call a state of peace, as if peace were dependent upon the body? To each and every one of you, wherever you are in this moment, stop. Observe the things around you and the things within you, for there is a very direct correlation between the two. For what you see around you expresses a quality of energy, a form of experience, that emanates from the quality of thought that you have been willing to entertain and to allow to enter into the field of your energy, into your domain. And from this choice you look out upon a world that you have chosen to create. I have chosen to look out upon you and to recognize that you are my brothers and my sisters. I have chosen to learn to look out and see only the light of Christ within you. That light that shines radiantly beyond all limitation. It is the light that I speak to, that light that I come to, that light that I join with, not only in this manner of communication, but through your dreams and in the space between the thoughts you would choose to think. If this is so, it must mean that when you are seeking is already within you, and that perhaps the pathway of transcendence rests not on efforting or striving, but on wondering. Perhaps it rests upon looking at all that you see and accepting the fact that you have no idea what it is, how it has arisen, where it has come from, what it could possibly mean, or where it is going. Perhaps the pathway of awakening requires that, after all seeking and all attempts, to learn magical formula to draw enlightenment to you. 
Perhaps it truly rests on the recognition of a state of humility in which you finally acknowledge that you have moved nowhere and made no progress. Oh yes, you called to yourself many experiences, high and low, and yet none of them has sufficed to help you transcend your common or ordinary or consistent state of being. No matter how good the love-making is, no matter how good the food, no matter how delicious the states of consciousness in meditation, still you find yourself coming back to states of being painfully familiar. What then is the key? It rests only in this. To begin at the end. To first acknowledge, in reality I have never changed. In reality I am as God has created me to be. In reality, I have already tasted all experience, and there is nothing new under the heaven of my consciousness. I am perfect and whole now. From that choice it then follows that you can begin to accept that, regardless of what you think you see and what you think you are experiencing, there is a depth of wisdom within you that can bring enlightenment from the highest self, if you will, from the soul down to the levels of the personality, all the way into the cellular structure of the body if that be your true desire. The true pathway home, then, my precious, precious friends, rests on the willingness to withdraw the value that you've placed on all of the perceptions you have created, to be willing to stand with empty hands, to look upon an object, a person, an event, a feeling, and to begin with that thought. I am whole and perfect, and I am bringing the light of my infinite consciousness to shine upon this mysterious phenomena that has arisen in front of me. Or within me, if you call the body within you, it too is on the outside in some sense, and to acknowledge that you are beholding mystery, and that you cannot rely on your own ideas to understand anything, that is the beginning of wisdom. For if you cannot rely upon yourself, what are you going to do? You could try committing suicide, but all that does is dispose of a certain body. You still remain. You can try to distract yourself with the ordinary phenomena of culture. That doesn't work either. In the end, you must submit yourself to something which is, in truth, the grandest mystery of all, the presence of the Holy Spirit. You must surrender yourself, all of your ideas about what you think is true, and ask that something you can't even see and at least in the beginning you can't even hear, to ask some mysterious something to teach you the truth of reality. It feels very much like dying, and in truth it is the only true death, the giving up and surrendering of your justifications for anger, your rationalization for judgment, your certainty that what you know is true. The acceptance of what you have called knowledge is highly suspect indeed, for if you believe you are a body in space and time, and if you look out and see a limited world, you are therefore using a limited consciousness to decide that you know what the whole of creation is, and the part can never comprehend the whole. Yet, paradoxically, there is within you that which is already the wholeness itself, the mind of Christ, and that which rests within you is a perfect wisdom, a perfect peace, a perfect knowingness, is ready to speak to you, so to speak, to speak to your consciousness so that you actually and literally have an awareness of being the wholeness of creation. Even though the body still seems to be right as it is, even though the objects seem to be around you, imagine seeing through them as though they were transparent and beholding all distant realms, and all past and all future in the twinkling of an eye, and allowing that state to be the normal state in which you operate, even while the body seems to last for yet a little while. All this is possible and more when you first use the power of choice given unto you to dedicate each and every moment of your awareness. Notice I said your awareness, not your experience. Dedicating each moment of your awareness to the process of surrendering everything that you thought you knew and needed to hold on to, to allow a mysterious something to bring the grace of enlightenment to you. Beloved friends, you who seem to find yourself in this third-dimensional realm, this physical realm of limitation and duality and conflict, birth and death and surprises, hmm, rest assured you have truly never surprised yourself at any time. There has never been a moment's experience that has come to you that you have not deliberately ordered and received. Nothing comes by accident. 
and of course you are quite free to choose how to perceive what comes to you, and if you allow that mysterious something to teach you anew, what once horrified you can now bring a smile to your face. What once seemed insurmountable can seem like the smallest of stepping stones beneath your toes. All power under heaven and earth is given unto you to create as you are created in each moment, from and within perfect unlimitedness. And now here's the real secret. You are literally and exactly doing this all the time. You never lose the power of the infinite being that you are. You cannot lose what God has created, or God herself is limited. You, as you are right now, with every breath you breathe, with every thought you think, with every action you perform, even if you have no body, you are literally and always using the infinite power of your wisdom to create. That is the only thing you have ever been doing. And you have therefore created heavens and numerous hells, and in those hells you have created an infinite number of shades or hues or vibrations. You can just as easily create as many heavens blessed with shimmering beautiful light that the earth has not seen for quite some time. In each moment of your day, nothing outside of you causes your feelings and your perceptions. Does this mean that if you experience another soul, another human being, that they themselves do not carry certain frequencies of energies that you can detect? Of course not. But the detecting of energy from the field of another mind does not cause you to perceive them in any way at all. You will therefore perceive them as you choose to perceive them, regardless of their name, regardless of their action. You are the one who is free to see that your power to choose your perception is a power that overwhelms and transmutes anything and everything that your world can direct at you. I hope that this is beginning to sink in, because it is an extremely important message. I want you to truly spend some time each day in the simplest of actions. You might simply be closing your fist and opening it again. You might feel your feet upon the earth as you walk forward in the direction of your choosing and all of your directions are of your choosing. Whatever you choose to bring your attention to, notice with perfect wonder and awe that you are literally choosing to create the experience you are having. Because this is true, heaven on earth is actually no further from your experience than the width of the thought you are willing to think. Heaven on earth is no further from you than the width of the thought you are willing to think. Heaven on earth is not apart from where you are. Would you therefore be willing to join with me in daring to think the thoughts of a planet healed and a humanity enlightened? Are you willing to allow yourself not to run around with placards in your hand and placing billboards around what you call your highways? We would perceive them as lowways. Would you be willing to allow yourself to rest in each of your days and simply feel the reality of heaven on earth and know that this has already come to pass? And in the field of time, it seems to be taking time for that to occur. But after all, that's what time is about. Process. In reality, if you hold the thought, it is done. And in truth, you can acknowledge it. For what the Son of God decrees is. No matter the state of mind in which you decree it, what you say in that moment, whether you speak it out loud, whether you merely think the thought, you have literally created that reality that fast in the twinkling of an eye. This seems like madness of your world because your world is madness. It is the complete reversal of Christed consciousness. The world represents the complete opposite of heaven. It is upside down and inside out. So that when I say unto you, when you think the thoughts of heaven and earth, you have decreed it and it's so. Now, and you are totally free to experience unlimited radiance, perfect peace, perfect joy, right where you are now. The world will say, that's nonsense, and this is the theme of this hour's discussion. For you to understand that right there is the point that you must begin to make a new choice, to learn to think with the mind of Christ rather than against it. By choosing to think with it, you become it, and when you become it, you realize a discovery a discovery of what has always been and has never changed. You are indeed, and you forever remain as you were created to be. You are the creator of all worlds, and never, ever, ever, ever are you losing, or in the state of loss of, your power to create precisely as God birthed you. That is how powerful you are, right where you are. 
And there are some of you, even now, that listen to these words and you think, well, that might be true for somebody else who's a little more powerful, but you see, my situation is such and such. I only have five dollars in my wallet. Look at that five dollars with wonder. Where on earth did it come from? It came into your being and into your wallet because you decided to put it there. And you can just as easily put a million of your golden coins there, if that is what you want to experience. Nothing but your own thought expands you or limits you. No one can create for you. No one can bring you the answers you seek. You are the answer you seek. You have merely trained yourself to believe that you are less than you are. You have trained yourself to believe that right now, in this moment, as you reach to scratch your cheek with your finger or hear the sound of a barking dog outside your window, or you see the flash of sunlight as it begins to disappear beyond the mountains to the west, and for some of you, by the way, if you happen to look out and see the streak of light as it begins to rise in your eastern sky, for some of you will listen to this early in the morning. If you believe that you are just some ordinary person trying to figure it all out, stop where you are. Look at what you see and truly see it. You do not know what a single thing is. It is a mystery, and yet you have brought it into form, even if it's nothing more than the table in front of you. How could it be that you're experiencing a physical body in some city within your 20th century America? How could these things be? What has brought them to be? You have the infinite power of creation sitting right where you are, choosing to look like an ordinary human being. The same creativity that moves the sun and the moon and the stars, the same creativity that brought forth what your scientists would call from the Big Bang, all forms of creation. The Big Bang, by the way, was nothing more than an aha in your holy mind as you dreamed up a new thought that had been thought of before, something called physical matter, a condensation of light. If you can begin to truly understand, as you place your hand around your cup of tea or your coffee, as these things are called, when you brush your teeth, when you watch how the chest rises and you inhale, if you can truly look upon these things with awe and with innocence, you can behold the mystery of life itself. And you come to see that you are constantly, moment to moment to moment, manifesting world after world after world after world. You are choosing where to be and how to be. You are the one sent forth from the holy mind of God to be the agent of the forever extending creation. I want to say also, and this will seem very radical to many of you, yet still, you are perfectly, completely free to create whatever you will. You are perfectly free in this moment to go and set that all you have and take up your cross and follow me. Some would say that means to become a rather bizarre radical. Hmm. I felt insane the first time I dared to think that thought. I and my father are one. Just to try it on, it created a tingling sensation from the crown of my head down through the body. It was a sensation I had not yet experienced, but I liked it. And I decided to ask myself this question. What would happen if I were to entertain that thought until it excluded every other thought that seemed to swirl around mind? What would occur? For you see, many of you are wondering, why cannot I seem to manifest what I want to manifest? It is because you entertain conflicting thoughts. And where there is conflict, there is stagnation. Be you therefore of single intent. Bring the consciousness to a single point in which the thought you would truly desire to manifest is the only thought you imbue with reality. When you have mastered the ability to discipline the mind, you will discover that you can create an entire universe with one thought. You will discover that you can literally create a golden coin in the palm of your hand merely by holding the thought of it. And if this is true, and I assure you that it is, you will be the bearer of miracles. And lo and behold, you might dare to think the thought of heaven on earth and put all of your focused intention on that one thought until it is your only reality and nothing else matters. Nothing else holds value. Nothing else can exist for you. And if the rest of the world thinks you're crazy, so what? That too is just a thought. You can bring heaven to earth in the twinkling of an eye. 
and it will come to pass that heaven on earth will be the case, and when it is established, it will seem to have occurred effortlessly in the twinkling of an eye. Why? Because enough of you will have chosen to energize that thought, and only that thought. You will live that thought. You will drink that thought. You will dream that thought. You will extend that thought. You will feel and live that thought to the exclusion of anything else that could contradict it, or be in dissonance with it, and then you will be the embodiment of heaven on earth. And the time will come, in time, when suddenly the whole of humanity gets it, in a twinkling of an eye. And in that very moment, that which is called the pollution of your waters and airs will vanish as if it had never been. That which is called strife between races will vanish as if it had never been. Anything you can imagine representing conflict will vanish from the face of the earth. And why? Because the Holy Son of God, manifested as the family of mankind, will have moved sufficiently into a momentum that creates a stabilization of one and only one thought, heaven on earth. That fast, without blinking an eye, without lifting a hand, that is what you are struggling toward as a collective consciousness. You are beginning to discover from your scientist that you can literally create what is called virtual reality. Well, guess what? That's what you've been doing all along anyway. Manifesting on this physical third dimension virtual reality, which means pretty close to the real thing. Hmm, think about it. For as long as mankind has been on your earth, and there have been many generations and many civilizations, great civilizations that have risen and fallen and have been washed away, that your scientists and archaeologists know nothing of and can't even believe would ever have been. Cultures so far beyond the one you now live in that yours becomes archaic and primitive, and yet all of them are an aspect of virtual reality. Heaven on earth will be the final happy dream that can be made manifest in the physical dimension, reflecting to all consciousness the truth of consciousness itself. Heaven on earth will last but for the twinkling of an eye, and then even this physical dimension will be as a thought that had never been dreamt of, as the Holy Son of God returns to take his rightful place at the right hand of God, which just means right-mindedness, creating only what is unlimited and without conflict, only that which mirrors and reflects the vast grandness of his radiance. And now, here's the paradox. You can't wait for that to happen, because you are the one through whom it occurs, and yet you can't bring it about. You can only allow that mysterious something to accomplish it for you and through you. I once said that it is important to become again as a little child, and now we come to a clearer and deeper and more precisely meaningful interpretation of that teaching. For a little child surrenders the need to be the maker and the doer. The child just holds the thought. It wakes up in the morning and says, Ha! Huh, I'm hungry. I wish to be fed. And Viola, the mother, appears at the door and says, Oh, my little child, are you hungry? Shall I feed you? And the child says, Well, of course. Why do you think I called you here? Hmm. Creation. The child submits to something beyond itself to bring about the manifestation of its thought. Does that make sense to you? Can you become the innocent child who first dares to dream the unbelievable dream, the dream of heaven on earth? It seems so outrageous to mankind. Are you willing to dare to let into your consciousness light seeping through a crack in the wall, the fortress you have built against the kingdom of heaven, the thought, I and my Father are one. I am Christ incarnate. How about that? Right here, wearing my Nikes and my Levi's and what you call this with the uh, New York Yankees baseball hat upon my head, you are the incarnation of Christ pretending to be human so as to be in a relationship with a lot of sleeping minds. And dare you, therefore, to think the outrageous and improbable. Dare you to contemplate and to allow with wonder that there is a mysterious something that can bring forth your highest creative thoughts when these thoughts are in alignment with the way God thinks. And God thinks only in terms of effortlessness, joy, unlimited, expansion, and love, love, love. Do you know what has frustrated your attempts to be the maker and creator of your world? Fear. And fear is the opposite of love. 
Love is the essential energy of the mind of God. Yet how many times have you prayed for a new job or a new career, new relationship, or a new washer and dryer? Because you fear not having these things. Because you fear survival, which is already to hold an insane thought, what could you survive? You are life eternal, and it will never be taken from you. You try to hold your reality together through your attempts to be the maker and the doer because you fear letting them go. And yet, in truth, it is nothing more than the fear of a child letting go of an invisible monster under his bed. But where you choose to create from loving thoughts, the universe, that unseen something I call the Holy Spirit, can begin to blend with the energy of your consciousness and begin to bring forth manifestations that reflect the vibrational quality of love. And love is that which heals. Love is that which forgives. Love is that which creates the space for a mind and heart to choose again. For you see, that is the energy in which God sustains you with every breath, creating the space for His creation to create anew. Love, what would it mean for you to go through each of your days and ask yourself honestly, in this action I am performing, In this thought I am thinking, is this grounded in my desire to extend and teach only love? Many of you will become quite frightened to discover that 98% of what you do is not founded in love at all, but fear. Therefore, if that is the case, learn to embrace fear itself. Ask of it, where do you come from? What am I truly afraid of? Can I feel that feeling? Can I embrace that thought? Can I embrace the whole idea, the perception, that is causing me to choose action out of a desire to survive, out of a desire to control another, out of a desire to prove to myself that I am unworthy of unlimitedness? Love, to think only from the foundation of love, is to return to your rightful place, in which creation flows through you as a vehicle of manifestation. Yet what flows through you is no longer yours. You are the enjoyer, the witness of grand mystery. You are free. You are awake. You are at peace. You are home. You are Christ. Imagine a life in which all your creations were wholly loving. That is the same as heaven on earth. So you see, there's never been a single thing that has caused you to be fearful. Fear itself can only arise as the chosen creation from the infinite and all-powerful mind that you are. If you could look behind your mind in any instant when events or whatever it seems to unfold, and you begin to feel fearful, you would begin to react out of that fear. If you could take one step behind the stage curtain, you would discover yourself saying, From the depth of the Christ I am. I choose now to create a fearful world in the experience of fear and all that comes with it, and I step into that creation now. And there you have it, the experience you're having that seems to be causing your conflict. Hmm, that does rather take away excuses, and it takes away blame, for even your most fearful creations can be embraced with perfect innocence. And why? Listen carefully. All that you see in the realm of beginning and ending is an illusion. It is a momentary, a temporary, call it a modification of the creative energy that flows through you. You just sculpted it for a moment, but think on this. Has there ever been anything you have attempted to create from a non-loving space? So the theme of this sharing with you will come to have its point as it will begin to be a building block upon which we will build heaven on earth within your consciousness. For if you are listening to these words now, created out of a free and unconditioned blending of two minds, two minds that are willing to love one another so wholly that nothing can serve as a barrier to their joining and to their creation. As we build upon this foundation, your life is going to change as it must. For if you are listening to these words, there is already a part of you that has heard the call to awaken and to bring heaven to earth. To dare to join with the most insane thought that has ever penetrated the myopic and narrow field of consciousness called humanity. What you could almost say is nothing more than the attempt to resist unlimitedness. Into egoic consciousness there crept a teeny mad idea. What would it be like to have heaven on earth? That's insane. I can't think that thought. 
The next day, what would it be like if all the waters were running purely and all the children were well fed and loved? All of you, each and every one of you now listening to these words, each and every one of you is a being, a soul, an entity, call it what you will, a focus of unlimited creative potential, a spark of divine light. You are one that has already allowed such thoughts to begin to seep into your consciousness. And the first thing it does is it begins to create a polarization within you. Because as light begins to descend into the mind, and then also down into the personality and body, it's much like turning on a light switch. And the first thing you see is all of the things within your consciousness that are unlike the thought of heaven on earth, that are unlike the thoughts of being the presence of Christ, that are unlike the thoughts of, I and my Father are one. And sometimes it seems to be not a pretty sight, and yet it is a very necessary process, for you want to learn to shed light with wonder and awe and innocence upon all of your miscreation. To wonder about how such a thing could ever arise, a thought of judgment, a thought of fear, a thought of lack, a thought of limitation. Let that mysterious something shine the light of truth upon everything within your field of being that is unlike the simplicity of love. For the shining of that light upon it already begins to dissolve it from your consciousness. That is why I once said that it is not necessary to seek for love. It is only necessary to seek for all the ways in which you have blocked love from being your only reality. That is your purpose. That is the gift of time, to ask, How in this moment am I using the infinite power of my beingness to create something which is less than love, something less than what I truly want? This tape, then, is the first in a series that will be shared with you through this vehicle, through this joining, in which many of us, what you would call teachers, friends, masters, will come to teach you how consciousness works and how to begin to rediscipline the focus of your mind so it becomes like a laser, unwilling to see anything less than love. We want then to suggest also that those of you who are listening to these words take the time to re-listen to them on several occasions. Do this in a very relaxed state of mind, not trying to grasp each and every word but allowing certain phrases and words to strike you. And the ones that strike you, write them down. And then begin a process of writing those words and phrases consistently in each of your days for at least 15 or 20 minutes in a state of aimless and innocence. Write the phrases and the words that have struck you. For it is that which strikes the emotional body that begins to create the space for something new to be birthed through you. Rest assured, you are not alone. You've never had any privacy. We see it all, and it's okay. With that, we are going to take a pause for just a few moments, for there will be some questions that will be asked by these present. Many of you will be a bit startled to realize that they are the very question that they are on your mind. Be at peace, then, and now we will pause to wonder what the questions are. We were just speaking, then, as we return, that when a question comes into your consciousness, it comes for a reason. Because questions, and listen carefully, questions are what form the basis and indeed sculpt the answer that will you discover. Therefore, if you want the greatness of answers, ask the greatest of questions. If you want clarity to come to you, be clear in the questions you are asking of yourself and of the universe. A question, once it arises, is an impulse of energy that has come into your consciousness, and it is designed to help you expand from a contracted state. A question, once that impulse enters into your consciousness, into the mind, that question never leaves until you allow the answer to be realized and integrated into your being. And in that very moment, the old you has died, and you will never return to it. Therefore, why not ask questions such as this? How can I be the presence of Christ? Is it possible for me to manifest miracles? Can I choose peace in any circumstance? Rest assured that by asking such questions, you literally begin to redirect how you create your experience so that you discover the answer. Therefore, if you desire to bring heaven to earth, rather than looking upon the world as you think it is and saying, Oh my God, what a big task I have. Why not simply ask, Hmm, how is it that heaven can come to earth through me in this moment? The answer will not be hidden. 
And so with that, have you questions? Yes, Jeshua, thank you. It's the first time in feeling the sense of wonder that you're inviting me and us into, that I'm approaching. I usually experience goals and desires as kind of burdensome, but it is the first time I'm feeling a certain goal that I really like as something and I can approach in the spirit of fun. And I don't even really know what my question is, but I know that's what I want to talk to you about. Now listen well to what you've just said and contemplate what was said a moment ago to you. There was a reason for it. If you would indeed draw to yourself the clarity of a certain answer, make sure that you ask a clear question. Therefore allow yourself, beloved friends, to just relax for a moment. It does not come from the mind, it comes into the mind from a relaxed state of being, a relaxed emotional body. Merely begin within yourself to say, what question would clearly attract me to the answer that I seek to discover? So we will pause while you allow the question to be birthed. You almost had it. How can I discern love's question from fear's questions? It is actually very simple. Love's questions literally create within the physical body a sense of joy. It may be subtle, a sense of excitement, a sense of wonder, a sense of well-being, a sense of expansion. You can learn to discern the quality of this feeling in the cellular structure of the body itself. Fear's questions create exactly the opposite, a loss of aliveness, a sense of foreboding, a contraction, a coldness, a darkness. A very good practice then for you as well as many, and luckily your question can serve more than just yourself. As you sit in your meditation, allow questions to come. As you begin to become disciplined in your awareness that you're watching what's going in the mind from moment to moment. When questions come up in your mind, pause and look at it and ask yourself, is this a question from love or from fear? And then ask yourself, what do I notice in my beingness that is associated with the arising of the question? Is it a feeling of fun or wonder, a bit of excitement, a sense of expansion? Or is it a contraction, a coldness, a foreboding, a dissonance instead of a resonance? Does that make sense for you? Yes, it does. It would be very good for you to practice with that, for you see, everything is a matter of vibration. Thought is a frequency of energy. God's thoughts are the highest form of energy. Love unimpeded, meeting no obstacles. Love is a state in which fear cannot be present. Therefore, look well and learn now to feel the quality of energy that you are abiding in. As different questions arise in your mind, you will come to see very, very clearly that the qualities of energy revolving around and emanating from questions being birthed through and in the vibration of love are completely and totally different from the feeling and vibratory quality of the questions arising in and around the energy of fear. In fact, they are as far from one another as east from west and have literally no similarities. One specific quality that comes from questions of love is a feeling of relaxation, so that there is not a sense of urgency and impatience. Hmm, just a thought to think about, to wonder about. Beloved friend, because you have chosen to take the time to allow the clear formulation of a question, now that unseen something can become to direct much clearer question for you, and the clarity of the answer is what moves you from who you are toward what you wish to be. And of course, what you are wishing to be is who you really are. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Joshua. Do you know why this work occurs? Because I'm willing to ask a clear question of myself when I was a man who walked upon this plane and saw the incredible limitations of physical form and dared to think new thoughts. How could I possibly find a way to communicate with all minds and all dimensions of creation? What would I have to become? How would I need to change in order to experience unlimited communication? The answer was the process of crucifixion, resurrection, ascension, Christed consciousness. So the answer taught me, because it became my experience, all based on the desire of finding an answer to a clearly asked question. Where there are no questions, you already have your answer. And how many in your world never ask new questions and then wonder why nothing changes? 
The question is how to develop a greater clarity and discernment around wearing one's own emotional body and energy and staying clear with that and not, so to speak, take on the cloak or clothes of another's emotional body and wearing theirs. Beloved friend, imagine that you are sitting in a grand orchestra and there are many violins and many flutes and many oboes and many clarinets and what have you that comprise this orchestra. And the show has not yet started and so everyone is tuning up their instrument. And as you sit there, you are a flute player, you place the mouthpiece in your instrument, and as you raise it to your lips, you are a little nervous, because after all, this is a new show for you. You are the rookie of the block, so to speak, and you seem distracted by the sound of the oboe, the sound of the clarinet, the beating of the drum, the little squeal of the strings of the violin. For a moment you are distracted. Which sound is my sound? How can I hear my own sound if all these other things are making noise around me? The virtuoso, so to speak, the master of the instrument, learns to put their attention on what they want rather than on what they fear is preventing what they want. And what you want to do is hear the sound of your own flute. And so you bring your instrument to your lip, and you begin to blow across it until you find just the right angle so that you can begin to emit that note. Oh, that's the one I like. Oop, now I am being distracted by the oboe again. Rather than thinking, how can I separate myself from the oboe, focus only on what do I want to hear, my own flute. Practice blowing the note again by turning the attention to what you want, by releasing the oboe player and the violinist and all the rest from being blamed for distracting you. Focus on what you want. What is the frequency you want to feel in your body? What are the thoughts you want to think? Put your attention on generating the momentum of blowing the note that you want to hear in yourself. And as you build that momentum, it begins to sound like the note struck from a crystal glass shining radiantly, sounding radiantly through empty space, where nothing obstructs it. So that even at the oboe player and the violinist are doing their thing, you are so absorbed. You focus all your attention and all your desire on not worrying about what they're doing or how their sound may be affecting you. But when you feel the effect or distraction of the oboe, you turn again to creating the sound of what you want. Whether it means breathing deeply, whether it means smiling lovingly, whether it means thinking a thought that it is done and I acknowledge it, you learn to turn the attention of your mind in the direction of what you want to feel and to experience to call into your reality. That is what builds the strength. And you see, that is what brings the answer to the question. For as you begin to stabilize by focusing on what you want, you become familiar with the frequency of the note that you are creating as a flute player. And the more familiar you become with that note, the clearer it becomes what is not that note. And in just the same way, whenever you think you're feeling energies and you're not sure whether it's yours or somebody else's, turn the attention of the mind from that thought. That's a useless question. Bring it back to the focus on. Who cares what I'm feeling now or what I think might be going on? What do I want? Oh, I want my body to be relaxed. I want to look lovingly upon the world that I see. I want to walk as a Christed being in feminine form. I want to be happy. Well, what would that feel like in this moment, huh? Begin to use the power of creation that you're always using to create differently. By bringing the attention from worrying about the oboe player to focus on the radiant jewel that you can bring into being by blowing your own note. Strengthen that. Become it. If you were to go on a gymnasium to exercise a muscle and go to lift the weight, you would not allow yourself to look around and wonder who's lifting what weight and why can't I lift the weight over there and all those other things. You would know that you're only there to focus on what you are doing. How are you moving your muscle? How are you lifting that weight? What does it feel like within you? For you know that if you distract yourself, you might hurt yourself. Is that not true? Yes. Each time you choose to let yourself be distracted by others or doing, by dissipating your attention away from the note you want to learn to play, and that comes by asking the question, what would it be like to be perfectly at peace in this moment? What would it be like to be Christ incarnate? What would it be like to be with no fear? 
what would it be like to be free of my past history. By focusing on your note, you discover that the only time you've ever harmed yourself is when you put your attention on trying to figure out what was somebody else's and what they were doing. The more you focus your attention here on blowing the perfect note through your flute, all of this around you will begin to fall away. It is called, I believe, vigilance and discipline. Let me give you a picture. Imagine being a Jew, the son of a Jewish parent, middle class to lower middle class, as you might call it, in a cultural time frame of great upheaval, great fear and doubt, struggle and conflict. Imagine standing in a circle, what you might call a plaza, I suppose in an ancient city called Jerusalem, and seeing the bedlam all around you, and suddenly realize that none of it matters. The only thing that matters is what do I want? I could have made the choice and said I want to be a successful merchant or a successful money changer like everyone else, but instead I decided to go for the gusto and ask the impossible thought, the impossible thought, the heresy, the heretical thought. What would it be like to be Christ incarnate in the midst of this place? I turned my attention to focusing on asking what I truly wanted, and that has made all the difference. Would you be willing, then, to begin to discipline the mind? to bring it back to asking yourself that question. What is it I truly want? What would it be like right now to become so outrageous in the midst of what I think is an insane situation, to choose to be unlimited in perfect peace? Any such thought like that will do as long as it is highly unlimited. Okay. Does that help you in that regard? Yes, very much. So then, we'll be seen if you decide to play the flute well, beloved friend. You might as well. You've already explored the vagaries of the clarinet and the oboe and the trombone. And don't forget the drums and the drums. Jeshua, what is it like to live the Christ vibration in 3D? It's a lot of fun. It is the wonder of wonders. It is so sublime and so grand that no words can contain it. It is to be in the world, but not of the world. It is to be so filled with wisdom and compassion, love and power and capability, at the same time to know that you are literally nothing. Of myself I do nothing, and many sought to make me their God, and yet I was telling them, don't look at me. I am not the maker and the doer. I am the witness of a great mystery that I now allow to flow through me. And each so-called miracle was a miracle unto me. It brought a freshness in each moment to step with a foot upon the warm earth at midday, and to be in total awe that the new experience would arise, that by placing one foot in front of the other I could end up at a well having a conversation with a woman that changed her life, that the Holy Spirit could speak through me to wonder how I even arrived at the well in the first place. It wasn't my intention. It was only my intention to be in a state of awe, wonder, and allowing. To be Christ in the third dimension is a very unique experience. It lasts only the twinkling of an eye, but that's how long the body lasts. But while it lasts, I can tell you this. Nothing you can imagine or ever create, nothing any mind has ever pondered, can match the sublime fullness and fulfillment that comes as the result of asking the question you have asked. For each question must be answered, and the answer is always the experience of the fulfillment of the question. Continue, then, to ask that question. There's one that goes with it for me, and that is, if being the Christ vibration in 3D is as sublime as you just described it, then being co-creating Christ in 3D must be a blast, and I wonder if that's ever happened in the 3D history that we've known of before. The answer is no. It has never occurred upon this plane. There have been many grand civilizations, but each, no matter how far removed, and even beyond the one you know, as we stated earlier. By comparison, yours is extremely primitive in relation to some that have existed before. But in each one of them, the thought was held that some could be Christ, but not everyone. They just held that perception that there had to be this hierarchy. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Therefore, the thought that is penetrating or descending is the thought of a world in which all body-minds manifest the fullness of Christ in consciousness, second coming indeed. No, it has never occurred, but it will. So that's one of the real opportunities we live in Shanti Cristo. It is not just one of the opportunities. It is the only opportunity. Everything serves that, or can serve it. 
Everything grows out of whether or not there will be minds willing to ask the question with you and be committed to receiving, which means to become the answer. For my two cents, if I had sense, I would say there could be no grander adventure than the field of time. Does that help you in regard to the question? Yes, thank you. Oh, then the answer is already being received. What an adventure I feel like I'm waking up in the conversations we're having. Ah, wonder of wonders. The question has arisen about the Shanti Cristo membership, and the comment was that it was exclusive to have tapes only go to members. And the question is, what is the question? For those not able to manifest the means to become a member right now, whether the Shanti Cristo play in that role to open up and extend tapes to others, what's your view on that? Not able to manifest the means? Beloved friend, we'll have you ask the question for it states of universality and human consciousness to deny the simple truth of all that we've said in this hour. There is never a time that any soul is limited. It chooses to manifest and experience exactly what is experiencing. No one has a dollar bill in their pocket unless they have chosen that experience. There is absolutely no one who is without power to manifest the means of manifestation if they are willing to take responsibility for their miscreation. And they smile and say, Well, if I created that, I can start anew. Exclusivity is the most interesting word in your language. Listen well. When one views something as being exclusive, they have literally chosen to place themselves on the outside of what they see as being exclusive. It is not the thing in itself, whether it be an organization, a group, or relationship, that is not what causes exclusivity. Perception creates experience. Always, always, always. And if anyone would view anything and judge it as being exclusive, then there is an opportunity for them to stop and see how they literally created the feeling of being excluded. Does that make sense for you? Free will choice is never taken away. I have never excluded anyone from me, and yet many, many, many have judged my work, both at the time I walked upon this earth, as being highly exclusive. Why did you only select those disciples? Why are there more women than men? I didn't choose them. They chose themselves. The same is true now. Does that help you in that regard? Yes. Now, you have an interesting phenomenon in your culture where there are many clubs that are created. Men have clubs and exclude women. Women have clubs and exclude men. Whites have clubs and exclude blacks. Blacks have clubs and exclude whites and reds and everything else on your planet. Yet I say this unto you, all that matters is what you truly want. If you look upon anything occurring in your society and see it as some form of exclusivity, stop and look and check your own energy. You are feeling excluded from something. And that is why you have called to yourself the experience that reflects the quality of exclusivity. There is something you are excluding yourself from in your own consciousness. It may not be that club that is a symbol of the energy that is going on within your beingness. Therefore, if one says, well, this is exclusive, the wise student pauses, reminds himself that why the experience they have created. And if they are seeing exclusivity, they need to begin to ask the clear question, what am I excluding from myself? How am I shutting up energies of exclusion? Does that make sense to you? Yes. So are there any more questions? So to each and every one of you that has heard these words, remember that it is a stepping stone. Begin to look at each and every one of your days and all your experience as you are being the literal and only creator of your experience. And it can be anything that you want. God doesn't care. You see, God is content to create you. What you do with the power that she has given unto you is your business. But part of God's creation is to extend complete freedom to his creations. It doesn't matter to God because he knows that you're going to come home when you choose to. And your throne awaits you. Your throne of mastery over your creation. We begin now to weave a blending that will create a vibration and frequency through this family. A family which is limited because we're excluding others. It is an open invitation. And any are free to join in the dance if they have heard truthfully the desire to awaken within themselves. In closing then, in this hour, my peace do I give unto you. And not as the world gives, give I unto you. Why would I want to give as the world gives? Surely that is the height of insanity. 
For the world gives only to take away. The world gives only that you might recognize the world and its greatness. But I give as my Father once gave to me, freely, unconditionally, as the overflow of love. Therefore, peace be unto you always, creators of heavens and hells, who are free at any time to choose anew. And because I am without time, I can wait forever for you to choose with me. Amen. So ends heaven on earth.